When I spit bars in a rave, man, I go hard like Santan. Man, I just need to talk about his post-match interviews because he's okay. always smiling and cracking jokes. <laughs> yeah. When you haven't secured three he's, points, he's meant to be charming, isn't it? It's ridiculous. Early, eh? <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. annoying. He's always trying to do banto. Good evening and welcome to another episode of Touchline Fracker. Um, this evening I'm you're all dressed in black. This evening I'm joined by three gentlemen. Um, you you won't even understand the production the production we had to go through to to even have all three of them. Here in my presence, uh, Ellis, how's it going, brother? All is well, sir. How are you? I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Shemi, how's it going, man? I'm good. Yourself? Yeah, not too bad. I can't complain, I guess. And uh, Stevie, how's it going, mate? Yeah, man. All is well. Be blessed. How are you? Yeah, I'm not too. I'm not too bad. I can't. Com- I can't complain. I can't complain. Um, as we're recording, Arsenal are still currently playing with Leicester, and it is still nil nil, right? Correct. It's t- tough for them gooners. <laughs> You're good, yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's tough for them gooners. So, so we'll keep an eye on on the the uh, game, and if any goals do go in, we'll let you guys know. Uh, but before then, we've got quite a few games to talk about, which have already um, happened. Uh, I guess it makes sense to start with the big game. I guess you can call it the "I don't want to lose my job" the Poch Derby. <laughs> <laughs> um, 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 both teams, I guess, kind of set up in that way. And um, I'll start with you, Shemi. Um, so obviously we're talking about United, Chelsea, uh, Shemi of Chelsea Hour. Um, what were your thoughts about the game going in? So looking at the lineup and how it played out. Um, so to be honest, looking at when I looked at United's lineup, I was actually filled with quite a bit of confidence because obviously Pogba was on the bench, <laughs> Greenwood on the bench, uh, Van der Beek as well, and um, <clears throat> I thought the game was there to be taken, but obviously the way we set out with five at the back. Um, and Lampard wanted to kind of keep things tight, conservative, and not concede, um, which I thought, to a degree, w- made sense. Why? G- oh, just given the way our season's gone, obviously, conceding okay. um, three goals to Southampton late on, um, the obviously West Brom, like we've conceded a lot of goals this season, and that's something that's been follow up of last season as well. So and I kind of understood it to a degree, but I didn't think it would play out as negative as it did. I also think he probably thought we were going to go with three at the back as well. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. he wanted to maybe try what he did in the FA Cup. Ex- I was just about to mention that. I thought, so I put it in the group chat that I thought um, he was going to go exactly how he did in the FA Cup with um, the five at the back. I thought that was what his thinking was. But in the FA Cup, we were much more aggressive. Like, we pressed the lot really, really high. Like, yeah. I can remember Matt pressing you up to death. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Straight yeah, back yeah. to Carrington. No, I haven't, I haven't yeah, forgotten. Yeah. <laughs> but um, the way this game turned out was just complete opposite. So it was more, you know, um, conservative um, and kind of just keep the clean sheet, um, which to a degree was a bit disappointing because I felt like um, we could have United were kind of there for the taking. You know, like obviously we've seen like Spurs um, came to Old Trafford and score six, and um, I didn't feel like I felt like we had enough firepower on the pitch as well to kind of cause a lot of problems, and that didn't manifest at all. So, for example, um, I thought Werner versus Maguire and Lindelof could have been a potential um, way that we could have got through. Um, I thought potentially if Havertz was able to pick up the pockets and dictate from there, it would have been all right as well. But it just didn't pan out like that at all. We couldn't get a foothold in the game at all. Mm, mm, interesting. And um, Stevie, coming over to you on, on the red side of Manchester, uh, what were your thoughts about the game going in and, and how it played out? Yeah, man, I was um, I was running home. To, to come and catch that match, actually. I took an Uber, yeah, and I want my £17 back. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 <laughs> that's the drabbest game of football I've seen all season. And, yeah, as you said, like, it's obviously two managers going up against each other who neither really set up to win. Um, I looked at United's lineup and probably lined up as a result of how Maguire's been playing in the last few weeks, like, mm. pretty wary of us getting caught on the counter and obviously look at Chelsea's team they've got quite a bit of pace um, so I think that's why you saw the Fred McTominay um, pivot they don't seem to come by themselves they only come as a pair mm. um, and yeah between them obviously covering enough space denying Chelsea um, opportunities but it just meant that going forward we were limited we didn't really have any options um, I wasn't too mad at him setting up that way because of the way we played against Tottenham and the goals we conceded but yeah I think where he made um, a real error is like width. Um, and obviously Aaron Wan-Bissaka is Aaron Wan-Bissaka. Like, mm. um, no qualms with him playing, but Shaw 
Um, I thought we could have had Tellez in there to give us some options. Did he even make the squad? That was odd. It's, yeah, it's, it's bizarre. Maybe saving him for Leipzig. Um, Mata playing. Uh, he played well against um, was it Newcastle. And PSG. Yeah, but I thought we could have had um, a fresh Van der Beek in there mm. as well. And um, Dan James, obviously, uh, dropping... One out of ten stinkers. He, he's not. A, he, he's not a man. Um, he's not. <laughs> he wouldn't. That wouldn't have even been a good performance if he was a left back. That was. I was shocking. He was sure. very. He was. He was, he was very bad. He, he's. He's so glare, glaringly limited at this level that it's painful almost. And the fact that we turned down the interest from Leeds, I reckon if he'd gone to Leeds, he'd look a lot better because Bielsa would have a, a, exact ideas of how he wants to use him. And we saw what Leeds did um, to. We saw what leads this to Aston Villa. So I think in, in that sort of setup, he would look better. But when I saw his name in the team sheet, it just sends shivers up my spine to, <laughs> to, a, to a certain extent. Um, to be honest, like you both said, the game was pretty drab. There wasn't very much uh, incidents I can think of, but there are a few. Uh, the first I'll talk about is uh, Maguire, um, who for his standards was all right. And I think that more, most of that was the fact that you guys, like you say, yeah, yeah. Well, Shemi was so blunt. But um, whatever he was doing to Aspilicueta, um, what what was that? What what what, what did you what did you think of that, Shemi? <laughs> yeah, it was definitely a penalty still, um, because he's literally Aspi's literally jumped up, and it, it looked from the way he was going like it looked like he would have actually met the ball if Maguire didn't use his arm to bring him down. So yeah, he's literally impeded him from getting to the ball. I think it was I think it was a huge offense. But it was it was funny how they spent more time talking about the Rashford one than they did with the Maguire one. Yeah, you know how it goes, man. It's football <laughs> heritage. Yeah, uh, what, what what did you think, Ellis, of that in, that particular incident? Yeah, man, setting out of WWE, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what Maguire was on. <laughs> it's only little Cesar Aspilicueta as well, yeah, man. Yeah, man. But it's just testament to um Harry Harry Maguire, man. He's like sixes and sevens at the moment, ain't he? So uh, yeah, I, I'm not too sure what VAR is. I'm not too. Okay. Mm. I know what VAR is, but I don't know what the officiating is. Yeah, because whenever everybody always says, oh, VAR, 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 it's yeah. not VAR. It's the VAR is the ability to mm-hmm. review what's happened. This still comes down to the officials, still with that ability, not using it to its to its up up to optimum level, or even furthermore, mm. they're like, <laughs> so sometimes they don't even use it, but then sometimes they're watching incidents and they're still making the wrong decisions. So you can't really, you can't really win either way, it seems. Um, they've got, like four men in an office, <laughs> just yeah, watching the in game. Like, like, <laughs> in some rural village somewhere. What's it called, Stockley Park? Like, how, how between four of them can one man not say, "Hey, right, yo, ref, go, go and check this one out"? Because they've even taken the responsibility away. You don't even have to make the decision mm. now. You just have to say, "Yeah, I think you should just take another look at this." Yes, yeah, but 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 none of them none of them want to do that. So it's, it's bizarre the way it's being used at the minute. Yeah, uh, the the next moment that comes to mind is. Rashford's is Rashford's chance, so that's when he got put through. Uh, Mendy made a good save. Uh, what did you think of that? Obviously, he's coming fresh off uh, the winner against PSG, fresh off feeding the kids of of the UK <laughs> again. Um, so he, he really can't do he can't do any wrong in most of our eyes, except for mine. Um, what did you think of how he took that chance? Um, I thought it was a difficult chance. Um, I Interesting. Thought, I thought. If he had taken a better touch, he probably would have got the angle better on for himself. But I think he, he just needed to lift it a bit. Um, I'm not too mad at him missing that. Um, but I would have liked to see a more clinical striker. I feel like the, f- the far side of the goal like, was, was, it, was Gabe. I, I don't think it was. I think okay. yeah. I, I, I watched it. If you watch it from um, Rashford's angle, mm. like just lying at Rashford, uh, Mendy had kind of taken a position where he's kind of in, was basically in the middle of the goal. Mm. Because he's so far out, that's made the, the, the gap for the goal, bigger, um, smaller, sorry. But that, that's yeah. Rashford though, because Rashford should have probably come in closer. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. That's, that's yeah. the thing. Yeah, yeah cool. It was, like, I think the space itself was there, mm. but the time that he decided to take the, the shot, shot yeah. meant yeah. that the angle, like you say, from his position, didn't look as big as it potentially yeah. could have. And like Stevie said, because Mendy got his foot out, if he lifts it a bit. Yeah. But I think, yeah, I think that's. Messi that's, chips that. Yeah, but Messi's not Rashford. <laughs> I mean, a good, a good striker <laughs> chips that. Yeah. But the thing with Rashford is, you see, you see this from him, um, like, week in, week out, where he'll have the opportunity to run into space and it's like his touches almost let him down. Like this this one was even a lucky one where he managed to get a shot off. Like there's countless times where the ball might bobble off his knee, it'll go out of touch and like United fans get constantly frustrated. So I'd just like to see a bit more 
consistency and authority from him when he's going through on goal. He's coming off two good performances, though. Well, I wouldn't say it was good against PSG, but he caused them trouble. He's, he's, he's and and it was great against Newcastle. Do you think you're being a bit harsh, maybe? He's he's definitely been good. Mm. But there's... Plus there's feeding the level, kids. Plus feeding the kids. <laughs> the kids is a mad thing. Shout out my boy Rashford. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, like you see, he's got... Um, He's got similar skill um, traits to um, what do you call it, Mbappe? But you can see obviously the the gap in quality. Yeah, don't don't get, don't get me started on that because the day after we beat PSG, the the Muga chat uh, the Muga chat was uh, was a mess. We're still waiting for Mbappe to come out. Well, so. Apparently, so yeah. Um, so as you were saying, he has a s- similar skill set to Mbappe. Continue. Um, but in terms of his composure and his ability to actually execute, technically, physically. Mentally, exactly. there's, there's a lot to be desired from mm. Rashford. So he's still what we'd call a raw player, and it's like how many years can you five, say six that? seasons? Yeah, in. exactly. But fair play to him. I thought he was one of the better performers on the day. Mm. I think the other chance that was a decent chance was Matter's chance. Uh, Mendy again pulled off a a, 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 a good save. Um, Shemi, um, this week P- P- a check has has been added to your. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know what's going on there. Love Let's it. not talk about that because that's an absolute mess. But um, how's Mendy been for you since since he's come in? How, how, t- obviously, you're coming from Kepa, so the buy is really low. Is really but low, yeah. forget Kepa, how has Mendy looked to you since he's come in? Yeah, he's he's he's, he's looks assured. He looks assured. Um, what I like about him is that um, he he's not afraid to go to go long. Like so, you know how obviously you all want to play at the back and stuff like that. Mm. But when it's when it's not on, he'll literally he'll say to guys like, look, let's push up and let's put it along. Um, aside from that, um, his kicking's really s- looks really good. The distribution, um, yeah. distribution looks really good. Sorry, um, and he made he made one really good save against Sevilla, um, where literally it was a header and it deflected off the Zuma and he was going one way. Boys, I saw that, that one. I out. saw that one. Yeah. So when, I, when I saw him claw it out, I was like, okay, cool. Like, yeah. You got, guy, you, you got you got you got something. Yeah, you got something going. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, he looks really assured. Um, aside from that, um, that that little mistake that he almost um did. Um, against United when he almost passed into his goal. That was nice. Yeah, as <laughs> aside nice. from that, he, he's, he's, he's looks commanding, man. Too he's much up. training with Kepa there. Yeah. yeah, okay, cool. And for you, Ellis, obviously watching as a, as a neutral as they would, but I mean, how neutral can a Liverpool fan be when Manchester United are concerned? Yes. And what what did you think of the game? Yeah, it was pretty shit, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty shit, wasn't it? No, I think like, um, obviously echoing your thoughts of, of both teams, it was like, I don't want to lose this, innit? So let me just maintain and... Um, Let's see what happens. Um, for Man United, you want them to take the game to Chelsea just because they're at home. Um, they've probably got the better attackers, maybe. Yeah, man. Don't know. Mata, Rashford, no, well, and that, da- Mata, Rashford, and Dan James versus um, what was it, Werner? Have it. Yeah, but obviously before the game, you wouldn't think those those three are gonna. So mm. I'm not too sure about you know, what's happening to that Martial and. Uh, he got a red against Spurs, didn't he? Oh, did he? So he's still serving his band. Well, see, I don't watch your games, man. That's how bad it is. Mad team. Mad team. Cavani didn't play enough? Uh, he came off the bench. How's he? How's he looking? Uh, I didn't watch the game, actually. So um, I guess, Stevie, you can give us a little bit of insight into our, our new uh, new sign-in. Hasn't played since March, so I'm expecting him oh. to take a while. But, um, yeah, how was he when he came on? Yeah, he just saw a couple instincts, a couple flashes. He's still, he's still looking fairly El sharp. Matador, yeah? <laughs> Matador indeed like yeah I, I think I think he's still got something left in him so um, to be honest I'll be expecting a few goals for him this season but can I quickly say like Kai Havertz bro where is he <laughs> okay is, let, let's talk like, about obviously like for me yeah <laughs> 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 uh, he scored and stuff though no Yo, he got a hat trick who did you get a hat trick against Shemi Bunsley who Bunsley Say it properly. I can't hear you. Oh, I said it properly, bro. No, I can't hear you. Oh, Bunsley. Bunsley. Okay. What what division are they in? Championship. Okay, not bad. Um, has he done anything like goals, assists in the Prem? How's his performances been? Yeah, he got, so to answer your question about goals and assists, he got one assist against West Brom and obviously scored last week. Mm. Generally, I think his performances have been pretty all right. Um, obviously yeah, because obviously I listened to the last Chessy Hour and you guys were waxing lyrical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think he's so, actually So, you know, don't, don't, don't wax lyrical on Chessy Hour, then come on the main pod and be humble. Give it the same energy. <laughs> Give it the same energy is what I'd say. Right, cool. Yeah, yeah. No, I actually think it's been pretty good. But yeah. naturally, obviously, given the price tag, given the kind of player he is, like, mm. there's going to be more scrutiny on him um, to kind of be like a highlight, more stand-up player. Nature of the beast. But um, yeah, yeah. But um, generally, I think his performance has, has been good. Um, I've been impressed with his, his passing. Um, I like the way he carries the ball. Mm. I like the way he receives the ball in a half turn as well. Um, against, old, uh, against Man United, he was poor. I won't lie. He was really poor. Yikes. Um, That was probably... 
a bit down to I don't know because obviously he was he was played off Werner, but it was meant to be in, in the pocket. But he was I don't know why he was so wide a lot of the time. If that makes sense. And um, if you take it back to the FA Cup semi final, um, when Mount played in that position, yeah, I felt like he he can't press like Mount though. <laughs> I felt like he played that. <laughs> he played more of a pocket role as okay. opposed to a wide. Yeah. Whereas I saw Havertz a lot wider. Mm. Which is not I don't think he's comfortable with. But apart from that, generally, I think he's, he's, been, he's been good. I'm, I'm happy with him. Personally. Cool. So before we go on to the next game, let's just a quick word about both managers. Um, I saw some bits Frank spoke after the game. Like I said, it it felt like it was both teams trying not to lose. Uh, and obviously the, the, the specter of uh, Mauricio Pochettino looms heavy. Um, we see it in the press. We see it from fans. Um, how do you think things are going for both of them? I'll go with you first, Stevie. Obviously, we know each other very well from Muga. Mm. Um, but yeah, for Oli, what, what do you think he because he got that he got a big win against PSG, so we know that's gonna give him a bit of that's gonna give him a bit of equity in the bank. Bro, he infuriates me. <laughs> he infuriates me. <laughs> and two sides of things. One, I just need to talk about his post match interviews because he's okay. always smiling and cracking jokes. <laughs> yeah. When you haven't secured three he's points. He's meant to be charming, isn't it? It's ridiculous. Oli, eh? <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. annoying he's always trying to do banter it doesn't yeah. work um, but nah he, he seems to galvanise the players whenever his head is on the chopping block mm. and it's like since we lost to, to Spurs we've what picked up two wins and one draw yep. so now his job's safe again for another six months at least so it's, it's a bit <laughs> frustrating it's, it's a bit frustrating because it's just it's just ups and downs ups and downs and you know with this United team like last year one thing was it that was indicative of our seasons that we could never pick up three straight wins and you're seeing the same pattern lack of consistency again and again yeah we just need to be able to find a solid team a solid formation a solid first 11 and i don't think we're any closer to finding that than we were at the start of the season okay and um for you shemi uh mr lampard club legend um how how, how are things <laughs> going with him obviously uh first season he didn't have any signings you've had a, a very fruitful summer uh, it seems like you're trying to use a lot of players. Yeah. Uh, Mason Mount still present, hey, but yeah. ever present Mason Mount. Yeah. How, how are things going for him thus far? So to be honest, I think something we've um, said on Chelsea Hour is that I feel we feel like he's caught between two identities. So and this week showed it quite a bit. So you saw um, against Southampton last week, you saw the first five, first 35 minutes, a team trying to attack, trying to play expansive, and knock it back quickly. Then Seville, you saw him a bit like a bit more conservative. Then against United, even more conservative. And it's like, I don't, I don't think he's really figured out like which way he wants to go like properly. And he even said something this week, something about how he doesn't have, he doesn't necessarily have this one plan, but he has quite a few or something like that. And it's like, yeah. it's not very, it's not, it's not very, it doesn't give us much like solid, so, like it's not very certain in terms mm. of where he's trying to and go. And imagine for the players too. Yeah, exactly. Like it's, it's, it's every game your manager's asking exactly, you to do a little exactly. bit something different. I think it was Dan or one of you guys who mentioned it, the variety of positions that Havertz has played in, yeah. the variety of positions that Mount has, has turned up in. Um, how are they building that that consistency when every game the manager's asking you to do something a little bit different? Um, it, it, it's interesting. Um, do we see both of them staying in their jobs until the end of the season? Yeah. Yeah. I'd say, I'm going to say yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, well, well, Lampard, yeah. Lampard, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Stevie? I can't see Oli getting sacked. I you think can't. he, yeah, he... He's almost like a protection barrier for the board. So if mm. he's if he's performing badly, um, he kind of takes some of the heat away. From Do you think him. so though? Because uh, the fans are behind him, and I feel like they don't get angry at Oli. They get angry at the board still. Like, why are you not giving him the tools after what he did in terms of us getting top f- uh, three last season? Over you guys. Um, the board are looking like, why are you not backing this man? Because he's already shown you that he can do well with a play. I don't think that may be the reason why, but I don't think it's actually working. Personally speaking. Yeah, hundred percent. But I think it, it is a distraction because when we talk about United, if Ole wasn't there and it was Poch, for instance, then it's just the board. But with Ole there, we do say Good point. a lot of people say we have an incompetent manager, which is partly why yeah. we're not doing as well as we can. Yeah, so it does take a little bit of flack over them. Yeah, that's that's, that's pretty true. Okay, uh, thank you both um, for actually making a pretty boring match sound decent. Mm-hmm. When I spit bars in a ring, man, I go hard like Santana.